So that'll be a loss of a timeout for the BC Lions here. Two unsuccessful challenges. And Reynolds stopped Anton McKenzie there. Anton McKenzie just worked around that lead block and got in behind it to get to Joffrey Reynolds to get Henry Burris in second and long situation. The Calgary Stampeders this year have been the number one team in the league on first down production, averaging eight yards on first down coming into this game. Not McKay Lozier checks in on defense. Passing situation for Calgary, you would think, on second and eight. Five receivers out. Put the inside And Dante Marsh there, but Bryant holds on long enough. He's going to be just short of the first down. It seems like Robbie Bryant's still fighting the football a little bit. He really had a tough day in Montreal with two catches for 18 yards in his bomber finale. Had one ripped out of his hands for an interception. Yeah, well, with what happened with him in Winnipeg, you have to believe that his confidence is a little shaky right now, and it may take some time. And he's trying to learn this offense here in Calgary. In fact, I was told by John Hoffnagel that Jermaine Copeland and some of the a couple of the slot backs here and Nick Lewis would help Robbie Bryant in the huddle. As they break the huddle, he would go over and tell Robbie Bryant what play he had. That, that makes it tough. When you have to think on the football field, you're often a step behind. Kenyon Rambo has been mentoring him this week and uh, less than a half yard away from a first down. There's Kenyon Rambo. And those are, as Robbie Bryant said, large shoes to fill. Third down, the offense stays out. Well, if Juwan Armour wants to make a statement, he could do it right now. This is his opportunity. down and this is George Cortez at his best the offensive coordinator of the Calgary Stampeders in a short yardage situation take the middle linebacker who's going to be in man-to-man -man likely and take him out of there by moving your running back out. outside BC number 95 Five yard penalty. First down. you see jo you see Joffrey Reynolds here and and, and right here so Juwan Armour who in a short yardage would want to be right there and be ready to dive over the top. He can't because he's got to step out to cover Joffrey Reynolds. So that takes a middle linebacker, your best run stopper, away from the line of scrimmage. So at the 44, it's the first down for the Stampeders. Burris looked one way and goes deep. And incomplete. Intended for Nick Lewis. Just out of his reach of the home run throw by Burris. Well, they've been working on that matchup. Occasionally, they'll get Darren Tony one on one. Whenever Tony's been over there on Nick Lewis, that's where Henry Burris has wanted to go when they've matched him up with Corey Banks, the nickelback. They've gone away from Nick Lewis. Second and ten. He goes out and works one-on-one -on, -one on Anton McKenzie and is well covered by McKenzie, the linebacker. He's just to the left of your screen, and Henry Burr is going to throw it to the sideline. Look at the vertical jump from Demetrius Summer. Summer's up over the top of Anton McKenzie and really just wins the jump ball. 21 yards for Summers. Tosses him back. A couple of plays, though, Chris. You think back. 
to the Romby Bryant catch over the middle and, and the one that Wally Buono challenged, that would have had the Calgary Stampeders punting the ball from inside of their 30-yard line. And all of a sudden, they've now moved across center field. So the field position is now swapped to favor the Calgary Stampeders, even if they have to punt from here. And very close to a position where they can make it a two-score game. Mm -hmm. They need another five yards to do that. Second and ten. And Burroughs throws that incomplete but took a late hit. Is it a late hit on the quarterback or a hold? Glenn Johnson. With, with Henry Burroughs down, you automatically think that it was a late hit, but I, I saw Brent Johnson clapping. Okay. Major foul. Roughing the passer. BC number 11. 51 armor. First down. didn't see and you heard Glenn Johnson explaining yeah. it to Brett Johnson ninth play of the drive and the Lions just have everything going against them right now a punt from Morris on a roll and incomplete closest man to it Brett Ralph but Burris was rushed on the play Well, a good decision there defensively for the BC Lions. Shane Simmons, who's in the game in this situation, decided not to hit Henry Burris after he threw that football. Mike Benavides has to find a way to get off, get his defense off the field here. This is like the four second and long situation. Now, I mentioned last week they were under 30% in second down conversions. And they just keep moving the football on second down tonight. Quarterback draw. And Hunt won't let him by. And he's crossed at the 30 at the 25-yard line. So a good drive for the Stamps comes to an end, but in field goal range for Sandro DeAngelis to make it a nine-point game. Well, a good drive to, to eat up a lot of time on the clock. And then have your, your field goal kicker who's hitting on just shy of 90% this year to come in and make it that two-score game. 33 yards out. The Angels has missed one in each of the last two weeks. But not usually one of these. Right off the ball. Oh. Double ball. No point. Dead ball. And it's three straight weeks for DeAngelis misses. And it remains a six-point game, and the Lions finally cut a break. Apparently, this week is exactly what happened when word got out Wally Buono acquired Casey Pinners, the free agent, to come back to BC. And the former league MOP had the city buzzing. Also, right away, the Lions took advantage of Printer's mobility as he pretended to be Henry Burris throughout the week of practice. And Buono kind of had his hand forced when the injury happened to Jarius Jackson. Plus, when you take into account Buck Pierce's injury issues, he had to go out and get insurance, and he did it. Buono going in a win-win situation, a chance for Casey Critters to re-establish himself and to cover the Lions' bases with Jackson out and Pierce looking vulnerable. A smart signing by Wally Buono, the, the general manager side of his job to bring Casey Printers back in. He's not sure about Jerry's Jackson. They're thinking possibly three to five weeks. We, of course, we know about Buck Pierce's history with concussions and, and some injuries. Travis Lule is now the backup. And not really sure what to expect from the rookie at quarterback. Second down here, second and six, and the flash intercepted! Keon Raymond is into the game, replacing the first game man, D. Webb, and Keon Raymond comes up with a big interception. Stamps get him right back. Proud sponsor of the CFL, Rona doing it right since 1939. Keon Raymond now 
back in the starting secondary, replaced Brandon Browder for the last three weeks, and now tonight replacing Dean Webb as a pick, and they're going up top. And Summers, the intended target, and no penalty flag on the play. Darren Tony, I think the Calgary fans want the, the screening call on Darren Tony down as he was chasing Demetrius Summer, puts his hands up right there, makes a little bit of contact in the process, did not look back to the football. Demetrius Summers has an argument. Second and ten. The oath is high. It's Tim's for Bryant. And it'll be third down. You know, we got to go back to what is one of the key plays of this game, and that's this interception by Keon Raymond. An out, an out route right here on the sideline, and the ball late for Buck Pierce, who throws his 10th interception of the season. He avoided the interception last week versus Toronto, but that one was a little off. Now, the last time the Calgary Stampeders tried a field goal, I've never seen that before. Yeah, that's a first, isn't it? Double upright. Now he'll try and put it between those bars from 39 out. Again, trying to make it a two-score game. Well, this time, it's through. Nine-point Calgary lead. 7.22 to go, fourth quarter. Hey, you got any change? Nope. But I can see you have change. Like, right there. In your hand. But, yeah, but it's breakfast change. For a sausage and biscuit sandwich from Tim's. They're only $1.49. Might have enough for two. It's go time. A freshly prepared breakfast for less than you'd expect. Tim Horton's new sausage and biscuit sandwich. Just $1.49. Always a great value. Always Tim Horton's. Best in class power. Torque and fuel efficiency. That's nothing new for the professional grade 2009 GMC Sierra, but this is. Pick up an 09 Sierra and receive up to $8,500 in cash credit. Plus, now get six inch chrome side steps at no extra charge. Visit your GMC dealer today for the 2009 best in class Sierra Clearance and find out about our new 60 day satisfaction guarantee. On October 2nd, experience a groundbreaking double feature movie event. <laughs> the classics Toy Story and Toy Story 2. Use your head. But I don't want to use my head. Together in eye-popping Disney Digital 3D. Vote for just one ticket. Exclusively in theaters for two weeks only. You are a toy! You are a sad, strange little man. Disney Pixar's Toy Story and Toy Story 2. With a special sneak peek at Toy Story 3. Starts October 2nd. Oh. Tonight's game story brought to you by Molson Canadian. This is our beer. 141st career touchdown pass for Henry Burris. He now owns the Calgary Stampeder passing records. Both running backs having a good night. Martel Mallett and Joffrey Reynolds and another touchdown catch for Jermaine Copeland. So Buck Pierce has got to try and find an answer and the clock now becomes his enemy as well. Grace Mullen. Had those two big returns last week in the fourth quarter against the Argonauts, but this one coming back. Illegal block, BC number 39. It's a 10-yard penalty and a run back. First down. That's the newcomer, the reserve linebacker, Sheen Simmons.